In this exercise, we are going to be looking into the flow diagrams, which is determining of the input values. We had this type of equation where we were determining the output values of a given flow diagram and also given a certain table that you can work with. Remember what I said on the introduction that the input values are always represented in terms of X. So given this part A, we are asked to determine the input values in the following flow diagrams. Question number one, we have got the part of the input values that we do not know, which is represented by X. The rule that we are given and also the output values we are given this time, we just do not have the input values. So the question is, how are we going to determine these input values? All right. Remember what I said from the previous class that Y that we see here represents the rule that you are given. Y is equal to the rule and Y is equal to the rule 5X plus 10 on question number one. So if Y is equal to the rule of 5X plus 10, what about X? That is the question. What about X? Because X is the input. So X is representing the input, not Y. What we need is X. So we must calculate or you must find X the same way that we determine uh, like you're solving an equation. So in this case, you're going to solve for X. To solve for X is to make X the subject of the formula, to make X the subject of the formula. Uh, I'm just going to talk about these, but guys, these words, all right, make X the subject of what? Of the formula, that is to solve for X. So how do I solve? I, I want to, to remain with X in this one. Just like what you see here, Y is equal to this. So it must be also a condition like where we say X is equal to something in terms of what? In terms of Y. We must have an expression in terms of what? In terms of Y. So how is that possible? You solve for X. So you can take the 10 to the other side of the equation, just like you're solving your normal equations. So if you take this 10 to the other side of the equation, it becomes a minus. It was a positive, so it becomes a minus. Y minus 10 is equal to 5X. So what you need to remember, you, you need to solve for X. You must find X. What is affecting X, the product, it's 5X, so you divide by five. So it's either you're gonna divide everything like this by five. That means you're going to divide like this X, uh, five and five cancels, you remain with X. So it means X can be written as Y minus 10, everything over five. This is the relationship of X and Y to determine X. Just like the rule that we had before to determine one. Now we are going to use this one that X is equal to Y minus 10, everything over five. So with these, we can substitute whatever that you're given. So that's what you can simply do. You can make, uh, you can solve for X like that. So meaning to say we need X, which is the input when the output is five. The output represents what? Represents Y. So the output is the Y value given that Y is five. So X is what? X is going to be Y, which is five minus 10, everything over five. Five minus 10, that's minus five over five, which is gonna give us a minus one or just use your calculator. So meaning to say X is going to give us minus one when Y is what? When Y is five X before there, was a minus one. So it's a reverse that you are simply having. That's the idea then. So it means that I could have even solved this from the normal equation there as it was. Remember before y was equal to five x plus a 10. But this one you have to solve each and every one equation that you are given. We, we, are, we are given the output which is five. So you just substitute y is five. So five is equal to 5x plus 10. Remember, you need x. x is the input. So you just solve for x like this. Just like the, you can even substitute from that equation that you have. Then you solve for what? You solve for x. 
I would use so for x transpose this to that side, it becomes a negative. You're now back to your equations. 5 minus 10 is equal to 5x. 5 minus 10 minus 5 is equal to 5x divided by 5. Uh, by 5, that's x is going to give us what? A negative 1. So as you can see, we are having the same thing. So it's either it's, you're going to make this x the subject, or you just substitute on that original equation as it was. Then you solve for x from there. So that's the idea. All right, let's move on to another output value. The output is 10. What is the input when this output is 10? Well, output is y. Remember, output is y. So x is equal to 10 minus 10 over a 5. So x is going to be a 0. There's 0 over 5. That's a 0. So meaning to say x was going to be a 0 there. So I want you to use this one the original way, 5x plus 5, and prove if x was going to give you a zero from there. All right, you do the same thing. If x, uh, I mean, if uh, y is 15, the output there is 15. So it means x is going to be 15 in place of y minus 10 over 5. 15 minus 10, that's 5 over 5, meaning to say we're going to obtain what? A 1. Or you can just substitute in this equation. So I want you to substitute there and see if you're going to obtain a positive y. The same concept, if your x, if your y there, the output value was 20, if the output is 20, which is why x was going to be what? That's 20 minus 10 over 5. 20 minus 10, that's 10 over 5, and that's going to give us a 2. So x at this moment was going to give us a 2. So that's the idea there. So meaning to say these are the input, these are the output values we can determine the input from the output. It's very, very possible. So it's either you're going to make x the subject to solve x in terms of y. That is what I'm trying to say, to solve what? x in terms of y. Then you simply substitute, or you just substitute back into the original uh, relationship that is between y and x. y is equal to the rule. So you can substitute whatever that you're given. If you're given this, uh, that y is 20, you just have to substitute in place of y, that's 20 is equal to 5x plus 10. You solve for x because what you need is the input, which is x. So you have to solve for x. To find x, you have to solve this equation. So to solve this equation, transpose 10 to the other side, that would be a negative 10. So 20 minus a 10 is equal to 5x. All right, so that is uh, a 10 here is equal to 5x divided by 5. Uh, by 5 to remove this 5 affecting x. So 5 into 10 or 10 divided by 5, that's a 2, which is the same 2 that we are seeing here. So that's how your questions might be given as uh, then you substitute everything on the table uh, like what we had. All right, so I want you to try question number 2. I'm going to work out question number 3 with you. Question number 3, we are also given the same thing, the input and so on. So we are given, we need the x value, which is the input given the rule of a third x minus two. So there y is equal to the rule. Remember y is equal to the rule, which is a third x minus two. So we are going to solve for x, or you can just substitute whatever that you have, guys. It's up to you. But like I said, since the input there is x, just solve for x in this equation, just originally solve for solve for x before you do anything just solve for x how do i make x the subject how do i solve for x i transpose or take this negative 2 to the other side of the equation so that it becomes a positive y plus 2 is equal to 1 over 3x all right i want to remove this 1 over 3 or the 3 that is in the denominator this one so how do I remove this? I multiply by the LCD both sides. So I'm going to multiply by three this side. This one, everything, I'm going to multiply it by what? By three. So meaning to say this is going to cancel. And if it cancels a third of three, that's a one. One times X, it's X. So X was going to be equal to three into Y plus two, which is three times Y. That is three Y plus three times two which is a six, or you can just leave it like that as a bracket. So this is the rule, or uh, this is the relationship of X and Y, that X is equal to what? 3Y plus six. 
with this relationship, I can find the value of X given the values of Y because Y is the output. So the first output that we are given there is minus five. We are given the Y value that is minus five. So if Y is minus five, I'm gonna substitute minus five here three into a minus five plus a six. So what is going to be the X? That is the question. We talked about the issue of our calculator from our previous case, or you can just use this direct three times negative five. That's negative 15 if you multiply. 3 and negative 5, that will be negative 15. And if we add negative 15 plus 6, you're going to obtain a negative 9. This is x. So we have got negative 9, which is in the input x. When y is negative 5, the input was supposed to be what? A negative 9. So this is the same thing. You move on to the output, which is minus 4. The same thing there, the output is minus 4, meaning to say y is minus 4. So x was going to be 3 into y, which is minus 4 plus a 6. 3 times minus 4, that's a minus 12. And minus 12 plus 6 is going to give us a minus 6. So that's how you play around with this type of equation. You just have to substitute if x, uh, I mean, if y in this case is minus 3, you do the same thing. You're going to obtain minus 3 for x. If this is minus 2, you're going to get a 0 there at the end. That's how you simply work out this. You're substituting into what? Into the, the one that you're given on this part. So I just want you to try as many questions where you see that there's a challenge on these questions. Uh, let's discuss so that we can do those questions together. So even they can give us in terms of a table. Remember, we had this uh, previously where we are given something like uh, what we have on E. Given this, determine the input values. We are given the function there. Uh, y is equal to minus 2x plus 6. If the output values, these are y values. Remember, y represents what? Output values. So the y values are being taken from 10. Uh, that is taken as 10, 12, and what? 10, 12, and 14. So you're going to try. There are so many questions there. Try as many questions as you can. I just want you to know the idea of how do you answer these ones. So it's either you're going to leave it like that, you substitute, then you solve for x, or you make x the subject, that is to solve for x. Because we need the x, which is the input. These are the output. So to solve for x, I was going to, okay, I can just take it this side so that it becomes a positive. 2x is equal to y on this side. It's a minus. So that's 6 minus y. Then to find x, you simply divide everything by what? Everything by 2. So x is going to be 6 minus y over 2. So it, it is going to be easier if you do this because you are just substituting. The, you are not solving for anything. Like Unlike if you use this one, you are solving every time. You are solving every time. But this one already, you have what represents x. Wherever you see the, 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 wherever you have the y value, wherever you are given the y value, you just have to substitute here and find what? Find x. So if y is equal to 10, let's take a concept. If y is equal to 10, what is going to be the x value? I just have to substitute in place of y there. I'm going to substitute what? A 10. So it's 6 minus 10 over a 2. 6 minus 10 is what? Minus 4 over 2, which is what? Minus 2. 2 into minus 4. How many times? That's 2 times, but there's a negative there. Or you can use a calculator. The same thing, if this y is equal to 12, what is going to be the value of x? I'm just in place of y, there's 6 minus y, which is 12, everything over 2. 6 minus 12 is what? It's minus 6 over 2. And 2 into minus 6, that is going to be there into 3 times, but that's a negative 3. The same thing, if this y at the end, there y is a 14. If this y is a 14, I'm just going to subject x is equal to, in place of y, subject 14. So this is 6 minus 14 over a 2. What is 6 minus 14? That's a minus 8. So this will be minus 8 over 2, which is going to give us what? A minus 4. So these are the input values that we are having. With these input values, what are we going to do? We are now going to simply have it as a table. But as you can see, the question was just to calculate the input. But you can even present it in form of a table, having your x 
uh, and y values. Remember, I said the input on top, so it means we're going to have x, y like this. We were given only three values, so you're going to try as many questions there. So they were given x, I mean y there. These are the y values, y as 10, uh, 12, and 14 as the output. And from the output, we calculated the x, which is at 10, which is minus 2. The x when y is 12, which is our x there, is minus 3. The x when y is 14, the x, which is what? Which is minus 4. So this is, or oh, this was just a substitution that was supposed to be used. So it's either I'm going to solve for x first here, then I substitute there, direct uh, the values of y that I'm given, or I have to solve. To solve, like I said, you have to solve for each and every, each and every part that you're given. What am I trying to say? Uh, given that y is equal to minus 2x plus 6. You solve for each value. Remember, we, 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 we wanted to have these x values. Given that y is 10. So I have to substitute, in place of y, I substitute a 10 where there's a y. So 10 is equal to minus 2x plus 6. I then solve for what? Solve for x. You can do that. Because what you need is x. So you solve for x. So you're back to those equations now to solve for x. I can transpose this 6 to the other side. Becomes a minus 10 minus 6. That's 4 is equal to minus 2x. So if 4 is equal to minus 2x, what about the value of x? Divide by minus 2 since you're multiplying here. So it means our x was going to be 4 divided by minus 2, which is what? Minus 2, which is the value of x that you're seeing here. So you can also use that. As long as you understand it, use it. If x, is, I mean, if y this time is a 12, you do the same thing in place of y subject 12. 12 is equal to minus 2x plus 6. Then you solve for x. Transpose this or you're transposing 2x. I don't know. It's up to you. 12 minus 6 is equal to minus 2x. 12 minus 6 is what? That's a 6, which is equal to minus 2x. So if we divide by negative 2, by negative 2, it means this cancels. We have the x value. 6 divided by negative 2 is what? Which is negative 3. Which is the same negative 3 that we're having here. So that one is up to you. The way that you're simplifying, the way that you're evaluating, it's in your hands. So the more you do your questions, the more you are perfecting yourself. Perfect yourself. Perfect yourself. Do as many questions. Perfect yourself. You have to revise as much questions as you can so that you know exactly how the exam or how your test is going to be like. Do as many questions. Revise as many questions. So these are the typical questions. Let's revise as much as we can from Mason African Motives till we meet again.